Lately, I've been thinking about The Wire. Rightly hailed as one of television's great masterpieces, Peabody Award winner The Wire tells us much about life in urban America at the turn of the century. More than nearly any other series in television history, The Wire represents a wide range of black characters that matter, spanning social statuses, identity categories, and various relationships to crime, law, government, and civic society. Its portrayal of crime, corruption, and injustice speaks to many of the social ills that continue to plague us. But 15 years after it debuted, now in the wake of the Black Lives Matter movement and the growing public awareness, meaning white awareness, of police violence against black people. What does The Wire have to teach us? Over the past few years, we have witnessed a steady stream of horrifying images documenting what many Americans have known and experienced for years. Black bodies and lives are often treated as disposable by police officers across the country. Where one such image was a galvanizing rarity in 1991, today we witness, share, and lament these atrocities on a regular basis, as our techniques of video capture allow us to see and document the tragedies that have been happening all along. For a show so focused on surveillance, we see no citizen surveillance of the police. Only the official systems that police use to monitor citizens, especially the underclass. Police themselves are immune to being watched, except by us, the television viewers given a panoramic view of every strata of Baltimore. So what does that exclusive vision reveal about today's questions over police violence inflicted on black people? The Wire certainly portrays many moments of police violence, many of which far exceed acceptable legal behavior. <laughs> no, no. Ah! Ah! Yet each action of police brutality is inflicted upon someone we know to be a criminal, someone who is hardly innocent, even though they do not deserve their beating. Deserve got nothing to do with it. Amidst a series with more than 80 character deaths, only one is at the hands of the police, an accidental shooting of another cop. This is a far cry from the Baltimore of Freddie Gray or the America of Eric Garner, Michael Brown, or Walter Scott. But the wire is significant, not only through these notable absences of fatal violence by the police. It reveals more through its wide-ranging camera granting the television audience vision and access where citizens cannot see behind the lines of the police force. This access is most profound in the second episode of the series. This case isn't shit gone. Shortly after being assigned to the detail, officers Herc, Carver, and Prezbaluski hatch a plan over drinks to assert their strength. Let's say we go down there right now, right fucking now. We go into those towers and we let them know. You gotta let these motherfuckers know who you are. Shut it down! Babo! Babo, Babo, work up! Hey, yo, come here, man. Come here, where you going? But don't act like you don't know me. Put your hands up. Put that down. Man. Drop that shit. Drop, Drop that shit. Kiss the fuck. Put your hands up. No? What's that? Just grab your pockets. Down on the fucking ground. After randomly harassing citizens who live in the towers, the officers proclaim victory. Y'all can let bugs down down now? Who own these towers? Because we coming back. I'm sick of this shit. When we roll out, come back in an hour, catch everybody dirty. You'll see how that goes. The inexperienced Presbaluski finds a resident sitting on his car. Move, shitbird. I ain't doing nothing. Really? What? I got nothing what? for you. What? Who are you gonna eye fuck now, huh? Are you serious? You put lead on my cart? 
feet on my car. Get your shit off my car. Prezbaluski clearly crosses a line, not only with his fellow officers, but with the residents of the towers, setting off a major incident. Got a visual? Get the radio. 11.35. Signal 13. 771 Franklin. In the court. Son of a bitch. Shots fired. Shots fired. Officers need assistance. I'm hit. Signal 13. Officer down. Officer down. The next morning, Lieutenant Daniels arrives to clean up the mess. They drunk us, boss. Who? Fucking project niggas. What are you doing here at two in the morning? Field interviews, you know, police work. Police work? Yeah. I got a 14-year-old in critical but stable condition at university. And two witnesses who say one of you princes cold cocked him with the butt end of a pistol. No, sir. I got his mother over at IID filing a form of brutality charge, which for her will make an even four in the last two years. It's none sustained. But all of them true. Lieutenant, we thought that. I got one less crown vic than I had last night. I'm out two Kevlar vests that burned in the car, two handheld radios, a shotgun, and I'm about to lose this idiot here for a week or two of medical. And for what? Lieutenant, we thought... What did you learn when you went into the terrace at 2 in the morning to conduct field interviews? What valuable information did we acquire from this situation? Our ID is going to be on all three of you by afternoon. And if you don't get a story straight by then, you're going to have a file thick enough to see the light of a trial board. Now tell me, who cold cut the kid? Me. Why? He pissed me off. No, Officer Prisbaluski, he did not piss you off. He made you fear for your safety and that of your fellow officers. I'm guessing now, but maybe. He was seen to pick up a bottle and menace officers Hauk and Carver, both of whom had already sustained injury from flying projectiles. Rather than use deadly force in such a situation, maybe you elected to approach the youth, ordering him to drop the bottle. Maybe when he raised the bottle in a threatening manner, you used a kill light, not the handle of your service weapon to incapacitate the suspect. Go practice. You fuck the bullshit up when you talk to a tunnel. I can't fix it. You're on your own. This scene reveals what no citizen with a cell phone could ever capture. The system of the police covering up its own criminality. Lieutenant Cedric Daniels, one of The Wire's most upright and admirable characters, teaches his officers how to lie to avoid discipline over the unprovoked beating of a 14-year-old boy. We witness a moment of injustice and systemic violence that confirms an underlying thesis of the Black Lives Matter movement. Within the systems of justice, young black bodies are not treated as citizens that police officers protect and serve, but as obstacles to be discarded on the whim of an incompetent and cruel cop. The system protects itself over all. Likewise, the wire itself functions as a narrative system that protects its own characters. Even though it clearly condemns Prezbaluski's violence and Daniel's cover-up, both characters persist throughout the program's five seasons, celebrating their accomplishments, rising in the ranks, and finding meaning outside the police force. But you can call me Mr. Prezbaluski. The victim reappears only once, five episodes after the initial assault. What's your DOB? 
Kevin Johnston is revealed to be a pawn in the drug game. Uh, what? It's him. Who? A criminal who Daniels tries to assist, but further implicates as an active participant in his own victimhood. Kevin Johnston? You hungry? Ham and cheese, too? I want a Reese's, yo. Peanut butter cup? Drink? Tea in a can. You got it. Motherfucker can't even look at me. What's say we start over on this? Start over? My lawyer said I got a case against y'all for this shit. Fuck the lawyers. I'm trying to talk about life here, Kevin. The game already cost you, right? More than it should have, I know. Whose fault is that? His. Ours. Mine, maybe. Thing is, I feel like I'll use something here. So I'm asking how you want to carry this. You want to get out? You want to do something else with the rest of your years? You come see me. Tea was sold out. Might be tomorrow, might not be for a while. But when you think you're ready for something different, you give me a call. I'll remember. Motherfucker thinking he can pimp me over a candy bar. The Wire forgives and forgets the injustices committed by Presbyluski and Daniels. It sentences Johnston to the sidelines, perpetually a minor player discarded by the game. The Wire shows how some black lives matter more fully than any other television series. Yet in the end, it refuses to portray how police, both black and white, should be held responsible for devaluing so many black lives.